summertime. Let's get to this method here with a how-to video. We all know that jigging for grouper, amberjacks, things like that have gotten really popular offshore. And you know the, the tackle setups for these are a little bit different than what most people are used to. We're using smaller gear to land bigger fish, but the gear is stronger. So some of the new advanced technologies that have come out in the, in the fishing tackle industry lately have made some of this kind of fishing possible. Uh, the, the company that started it mainly was Shimano uh, with their butterfly jigging setups along with the, the special carbon fiber rods that they've been building that are almost unbreakable. Um, for instance, here's a, here, here, here would be a pretty decent combo for jigging offshore. Here's a Shimano Travala rod with a Spheris 1400 spooled with 80 pound braid. And I'm gonna go through and show you some of the special knots that we would use to attach the leader material to the braid, as well as attaching the jig. And I'll go through some of the jigs that you would use out there too. Butterfly jigs have kind of gone away. Not too many people use them anymore. There's some newer jigs that have come up that a lot of people are using that are doing better on. And uh, we'll go through some of those in just a minute and I'll show you how to do a PR knot. So stick around, I will show you some of the other tackles that you could use, some of the other rods, some of the other reels. And uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Thanks. Latest information, Coast Guard, or Charter Boat. So here we are at one of our end caps that we have a lot to do with the offshore jigging. I'm going to show you some of the reels, some of the jigs, and things like that that you can use to be very productive offshore. Uh, you know, the reels range from spinning to conventional. I prefer spinning myself. I can I can get a little bit more. I can get it up a little bit faster. I can I can. You know, I, I'm just used to spinning gear, and that's what I'm used to, and I have a lot of luck with it there are a lot of people that use conventional gear and I've used conventional gear and it seems to work real well too. Um, some of the major reels that you'd be using like a, a Shimano Saragossa, here's an 18,000 uh, reel. This bull with 80 pound test will hold just about any kind of fish you can ever imagine. Probably the most uh, most most popular reel would be the pin battle. I know this is a Sargus, I accidentally grabbed it. But the pin battle reel um, it's got a neoprene ring on the top. It's got a great drag system. They hold up real well and the price on them it, it is really good for the average fisherman. Uh, Penn has come out with a new Spin Fisher V8500. I think these are going to be some awesome reels for jigging. They combine the old Spin Fisher series along with the Slammer series. So you've got a waterproof drag, you've got a neoprene ring. The drag systems are super smooth. They seem like they are battle tanks. They seem very tough. They're a little bit heavy, but I, I think they'll hold up really well. Coming in at a price of like 179, which is not terribly expensive for some of the offshore jigging reels. Uh, some of the some of the conventional reels that people would be using would be something like the Daiwa Saltist. Not necessarily the size, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, but you could use this one. Um, you know, this has got a two-speed reel, so you could. You can, you can jig up through the water column faster, and then once you get a fish on, if you need more torque, you can drop down. Um, and they fit in your hand really well when you're wanting to uh, do a lot of jigging. Um, on the upper scale, you know, we've got the Talicas. They've got a really great drag system. And they're two-speed as well, so you can jig fast, then get more torque if you need it. Um, we also have, of course, the Trinidad series. They've got a good drag system, good clicker system. And all, all these reels would be acceptable for doing the kind of jigging that you'd want to do offshore for groupers, amberjacks, things like that. There's not many fish that you can't catch jigging offshore. Um, for instance, some of the most popular jigs that you, we are, we're selling and people are having the best luck with, number one is probably the Blue Water Candy Roscoe jig. Uh, they come in two ounce. This would be good for like uh, black sea bass, you can catch grouper on these as well, um, but that, that's a good jig for shallow water, the little two ounce. He, he comes with a treble hook on the bottom ready to go. Uh, then you can step up to the four ounce Roscoe jig, uh, and they, 
you can buy these rigged or unrigged with the hooks if, if you want. And um, they, they work really well. They go from four ounce, seven ounce. I think we've even got 11 ounce Roscoe jigs for some really deep water fishing. They are some great jigs. Uh, barefoot jigs are awesome. We got the, uh, like the crab uh, decoy jig by Barefoot. This is a great, this is a great jig. You can put a cigar mint on here and I've, had, I've got some guys who swear by this one over just about anything else. Um, we've also got the, the barefoot squid jigs. I've got a whole line of also knife jigs and things like that that you can check out that, that work real good, especially for mid-column fish such as king mackerel and, and things like that. Um, in addition to just bottom jigging with this equipment, you can also do topwater fishing. Excuse me one second. Um, Shimano now has a series of uh, large topwater baits. Uh, this is the Orca series. They've got really heavy hooks on them. They're tough, tough, tough baits. Amberjacks, blackfin tuna, yellowfin tuna. If you see them busting up on top, this is a really good time. And you can use your jigging gear to do this kind of fishing. Uh, if you want to step up to a seven foot rod on your jigging gear, it might make it a little bit easier to throw some of these guys, like the Star Paraflex rods. And that makes a uh, that makes for a really good time and some, some really good action for the topwater fishing. In addition to that, we've also got, you know, like the Cobia jigs by Blue Water Candy, which these can be used for grouper as well. This is a hair jig that will get you down, and uh, you can use those. Uh, we got the Mama Jamas uh, with the spinner blade on the back. You can cast or troll those. But um, and don't think that with jigging gear that you can't use bait. A lot of people are using bait with jigging gear as well. You can take, you can take that rod and reel that I showed you earlier, and you can use bait for grouper on the bottom, you can jig for grouper on the bottom, you can throw top water baits for tuna and things like that. You can even troll for king mackerel with them. It's amazing what some of this new jigging gear can accomplish, and you can have one setup that will do just about everything that you want to do, which was almost impossible, say, 10 years ago. But with the advent of braid, carbon fiber, it's made fishing you know fishing tackle a whole lot more advanced and you can combine a lot of different kinds of fishing into one kind of setup so i'm going to show you some rods here in just a minute show you how tough some of them are and uh, we'll be right back have you heard the news king mackerel and the blues are running here we are at our jigging rods um, they range anywhere in price from say $69.99 on up to three, four hundred dollars. You can kind of put whatever you want into it. Uh, probably on the low end here, on the, on the lower end of the scale, we've got the, uh, the Ugly Stick Tiger series. They come in at $69.99 and uh, they're pretty good rods. I've, I've seen some breakage, but Shakespeare does stand behind their products, so if you do manage to break one, you can get you can get one replaced. Um, moving up a little bit, uh, we'll get into the uh, Star Stellar Light series at like 189. And these rods, they they're they're tough. They stand behind them with a five-year warranty. If you break it, you get another one. If I got one in the store, I'll replace it right then. If not, I'll order one for you. Um, Pin has come out with a Blue Water Carnage series rod. These are pretty new, so it's hard for me to talk about how well they perform. Uh, and I haven't seen any breakage yet, but I haven't sold a whole lot of them just yet. Um, they're coming in, you know, at 129. Then, if you want to get on up into some of the you know, higher end rods, um, we got. Uh, got the star plasma series rods which is these are this is what I'm fishing with uh, I have not gotten one of these back yet broken they, they they do hold up really well they've got a lot of power they're really light and they're coming in at $2.99 I've got commercial guys who have switched over to jigging gear and are using this kind of equipment are using jigs instead of bait now commercial guys are using it, then it's bound to be working really well. Um, it 
those are just a few of the rods. And of course, you've got the original uh, Shimano Travala rods. Uh, these were probably some of the first really butterfly jigging rods that came out. They're still really good rods. I sell a ton of numbers of these. I get some breakage, but not terrible. Shimano stands right behind them. If you break one, you get another one. Um, you know, and they come in at like 139, 149, 159, depending on which model that you get. But these are some of the some of the best rods that you can use. And you know, you, you you've got a price range here that you can buy a jigging setup. You know, for anywhere from 200, 250 dollars on up to eight, nine hundred dollars, whatever you want to spend on a jigging setup. And don't forget, you don't just have to use a jigging. You can use it trolling. You can use it for bait fishing on the bottom. There's just about nothing you can't do with a jigging setup. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you the PR knot and how to connect a jig in just a second. Hey buddy, have you heard the news? Hey folks, told you I'd show you how to do the PR knot and here we go. So to do your PR knot there is one special piece of equipment that you're going to need and uh, that is a fly tying bobbin with an empty spool. Um, fly tying bobbin with an empty spool. Uh, this will make tying a PR knot much easier. You could probably do it without it, but I don't know how and I wouldn't want to try. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your line from your rod and you're going to insert You're going to insert the end of your line into the bobbin. And just hold that that piece of line on there with a piece of tape. start winding it on. It's always better to have a little bit extra than not enough. Just wind you a good amount of braid on there so that you know that you'll have enough to finish up your knot. Then you're going to take your leader material. Here I'm using some high vis 130 just so that you can see it well. And get you about a hand length worth of tag end. And start with your bobbin. Start winding it on. And do do wide wraps. Do long wide wraps. Same kind of theory as if you were tying a wire leader for king mackerel. You need those wire wraps to cinch down without snapping. So you do some wide wide wraps just like that. Okay. And then you're going to start spinning your bobbin to make really really tight wraps. So we'll start spinning on down the leader we're going to do I don't know 20, 30, 40 say, say about 3 inches worth okay so you got 3 inches worth of that uh, that tight wrap then you're going to flop the bobbin back over those wraps that you started because you're going to wrap back up. Notice I flopped it back up on itself. And start wrapping again. Real tight. Wrapping. This is certainly much easier to do on the hill than it is on the boat. I'll show you another knot that you can use while you're on the boat. 
in case uh, your PR not breaks or something happens, which this knot should not break on you. You wrap it around the large wraps with the small wraps too. So once you've gotten to that point where you've got your whole wrap done, you're going to just take the bobbin off and you got your tag in here. Now with your tag in, you're going to hold it tight right here and make a half hitch. So go around your main line and that little piece of tag in that you had. <coughs> go around it and back inside that loop that you made. Pull it down tight. You're going to do that three or four times. Just single half hitches all the way down. And after you've done that, then you're going to do a double half hitch, which is the same as a single half hitch. You just go around both your tag and your main line inside here one time, two times, that's your double, pull it tight. Then trim off this real close, trim off this real close, and that will make a very smooth transition from line to leader. It might also be a good idea to hit this with a little bit of Zappa Gap or some kind of uh, glue to make sure everything stays in place. But as you can tell, this knot right here is 100% knot strength. This does not decrease the strength of your line on your braid or on your leader. This is probably the toughest knot that you can do as well as being the smoothest knot transition that you can have. So thanks a lot. I'll show you the other knot in a minute. So guys, I, I told you I'd show you a knot to tie on the fly when you're on the boat. If, and just in case your PR knot breaks, since a PR knot's kind of difficult to tie on the boat, might not have your bobbin with you, it takes a while, you want to get right back into the action. Um, so what you can do, and I'm also going to show you how to tie the jig on. So here we got some 100 pound leader material. Here we've got the same braid that uh, we had in the clip before. Um, we'll pan down here so we can see my hands good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the lines parallel to each other. And we're just going to start wrapping down. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, and then fold your leader material back toward your tag end of your braid and wrap around both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <coughs> now, <coughs> if you'll see this line is coming out this way of the loop that I made. You want your tag end of your braid coming out the same way. So we're going to take this tag end and push it through here. We're going to cinch it all down. Start pulling on both ends. Pull tight. Don't watch Tim Powell, the dentist. Pull it tight. From both ends. And there we go. And that knot right there will get you right back that knot right there will get you right back into the action and uh, it's almost as strong it's not quite as smooth a transition 
as the PR knot is, but it'll it'll certainly get you fishing uh, a lot quicker than say a PR knot will. Uh, I also said that I would show you how to attach the jig. So we'll come on this end right here. And here's the jig. You want to make sure that you don't tie to this end. You don't jig like this. You don't tie here. You don't tie to the split ring. You want to make sure you tie to the solid ring of the jig. Okay. So what we're going to do is I, I just use my regular fisherman's knot when I tie this. So I put my line through the solid ring. I make a loop. I loop around both of those lines inside this loop that I'm making. One, two, three, four, about five times. Cinch all that down. Take it down. Make sure it's good and wet before you cinch it hard. Pull, pull, and you're done. Just trim that end off and you're ready to go. And one thing that this does is, since the hook is not attached to the lure, the fish cannot get any leverage to pull the hook out of his mouth. And that's the main reason that these jigs are so effective. It, the, the hook doesn't take away any action from the jig and the fish cannot get any leverage. But thanks for watching. Have a good day. The blues are running all along the coast. Talk about fishing, you can't give the fish away. Everybody's lucky. I'm going to show you guys how tough some of these new jigging rods are. I'm not a small guy, I'm not a big guy, I'm 5'10", I got a few extra pounds, but I can put some pressure on some of these rods, and I'm going to show you how much pressure you can put. I've got one rigged up here, um, so if you'll notice, I'm going to wind down until I get right about to the jig, and I'm going to pull up about as hard as I can. So if you've got a fish that's on the bottom that doesn't want to come out, you have got plenty of power to be able to get these fish out of the rocks or get them off of the bottom. So uh, we'll show you just some of the rods here in just a second. We'll be right back. One more day.